I'm gonna need this. All right, so today what I wanna talk about is how you can get video off of a surveillance camera disc and onto an iPad. So if you've gotten a disc of surveillance camera footage, uh, you've probably looked at it and looked for what's the video file to save and you just seen gibberish. Uh, and that's because a lot of times video camera systems uh, have their own kind of proprietary uh, software and viewer that you need. So the problem then is once you're in that viewer, a lot of those viewers are written only for Windows. And so how do you get that into something like an iPad or on a Mac or just in a way that you can look at it that's not requiring you to have to open up a specific kind of viewer. Let's say you want to put a clip of it into your opening or you want to use a clip, a very small clip of it uh, to cross-examine a witness and you don't want to necessarily have to pull up the whole thing. Um, you might want to extract that. Now there's a couple of different ways it works and um, a couple of different things that you can do. I'll show you three examples um, that we come across uh, relatively frequently um, just to give you kind of a flavor of what's going on out there. So the first uh, one that I'm going to show you is this executable. Everything that you need to be able to view this video is self-contained within this file. And so um, it's just one file that we got uh, in Discovery. In this case, it involved um, a slip and fall in front of a um, commercial building. And so you double click it and you get to see kind of like this proprietary viewer. Right now, there are three camera views that uh, apply to kind of the relevant time frame. And you'll see that there are some play controls up here and not much else. So I can play it. I can kind of look at all three feeds at once. I can pause it. I can kind of go a little bit faster if I need to. Um, and I can use this bar over here to scrub forward and back. So let's drag that and go forward and back. Now the other thing that I can do is I can change how I'm viewing these. And so right now I'm looking at all my angles at once. If I had a whole bunch of angles, I could hit that button. Um, or I could click on one. Let's say I wanna see this interior shot, double click on that one, and it just gives me the one shot at a time. And so now I can play just this clip and if that's only the only angle that I want. Let me pause it here. Right, so now the question is, I have this video, this is what I wanna see, how do I get it out of here if I wanna get it out of here? Now there's a lot of rhetorical and some evidentiary reasons why you might not, not wanna get it out of here, um, but just in terms of being ease of use, being able to use it day to day, you probably wanna get it out of there. And so if you just want kind of the, uh, the frame that you're looking at here, a lot of these programs usually have an export function. Go to File, Export, Export Image, and then it'll ask you, you know, where do you want to save this? And it'll save this as a bitmap, right? So let's say I want to save it on my desktop. Come up here, desktop, and then call it interior, right? Save it. Now if I look at my desktop, I have just that image that's in there, right? Double click. And there it is. And you'll notice it's pretty small. And it's because a lot of surveillance camera um, cameras that are out there do not give you really great kind of like huge Instagram worthy uh, images, right? Nothing that you're going to put and mount on a canvas. So we can zoom in on it a little bit just to see what it looks like. But here's kind of our export. Let's look at this next version uh, called Intellex. Intellex is another viewer that uh, we see quite a bit. Uh, a lot of kind of commercial places will use it. Let's see here. Sometimes the file is really buried. So you gotta kind of have to look through all the gibberish looking folders. So I look at this kind of like file path. And then here there's this file that I don't know what it is, but it's relatively big. So I'll just double click on that once I have the, the viewer installed, the Intellix player installed on my computer. And now what I see, if I make it bigger, I have nine camera angles from the interior of this uh, Louis Vuitton store on Michigan Avenue. If I drill down in here, um, I could see each of the individual kind of uh, angles that I want, right? Or if I wanna see more angles at a time, four of them, nine of them, I can do that. Go faster, this lets you go faster a little bit if you need to go faster, or you can go backwards a little bit slower. So we can get a nice view of what's going on in here. In this one, if we look at it, none of these options give us the option to export, right? Database doesn't let us, lets us, it would let us import more video files, but it won't let us export more files. And so it becomes a little bit more tricky in terms of how do we get files out of here. And ultimately what we have to do a lot of times 
is we'll just screen record. And so what we'll do is let's say that this angle back here from the stock room, full screen, is what we want to watch, right? And this is what we want to see and record. Then what we'll do is we'll then use screen recording software or a screen recording device to capture what's going on on our screens. Uh, so that's what you'll have to do here. The one that I typically recommend is OBS Screen Recorder. In fact, that's what I use to record all of, like the tutorial parts that I'm using here. Right, now the last example that I'll give you is this one. Uh, it, it came with, there was like three things that came in this folder. Right? So once it was installed, uh, then I could just double click on that data file or the, whatever it has. Usually it's always a weird file extension on there. And now I can see kind of the player is showing me what the video feed excerpt is. Uh, I've, on this one I've got two angles. This was from a, a motor vehicle accident uh, where uh, the driver, the truck driver had kind of barreled through a, uh, a stop zone uh, on a highway. I think there was either an accident or construction happening and uh, the dr truck driver allegedly was asleep at the wheel or falling asleep at the wheel when he barreled through without even hitting the brakes uh, and rear-ended several vehicles. And so on this one, uh, we see left and right, and we'll hit play, and we can kind of see what's going on. There's also audio on this one, and I'll turn the audio off for now just so it's not interfering with what uh, I'm trying to say on this video. But you can see kind of what's happening, um, and the video ends, right? I can then, there's a button right on the bottom that make it relatively easy on this one that says export view and it asks me what do I want to show. Do I want to show the front view, the interior view, or both? And for this one, I'll choose both. Hit OK and uh, let's talk about uh, truck, All right? And then that's, it asks me how, what kind of compression do I want. I'll just leave it at full or uncompressed so I can get as much out of the image as possible, All right? and then it's exporting it, and here it is. Right, so it's giving me both angles, it's exporting the view, and it's given to me in a little bit of a different way, which is interesting, right? And so it's given to me top and bottom uh, in terms of the two different views, but what's nice is I'm also getting a lot of the other kind of, not metadata, but other data about what the truck was doing at the time of impact and right before impact. So that's in there as well. I can expand the view or collapse the view if I just want to see one view at a time. Right? I can switch front, rear. Um, I can toggle back and forth between front and back. And if I want to export the video, then I can just do that. So if I just want one, I can export, just export one. And I could say truck front and export that uncompressed. Wait a minute for it to pop up tells me it's done successfully. And then let's go to my desktop. And now I've got just the front view of the truck uh, with all this diagnostic information as well. And I think that's more of the trend. The more modern the software is, the more modern the security camera or surveillance footage is, the more options you're gonna have. But a lot of times um, the way that these things work is you're just gonna get a way to see the video files. And if you want to be able to actually have a video file itself that you can use on in PowerPoint or in trial presentation software or just to put in Dropbox so you can show it to a witness um, before you put them on the stand uh, and you want to review, uh, that's something that you might have to use some screen capturing recorder and that's kind of like the little secret uh, that we have in our office of how we always can get video footage out of anything no matter how difficult it may seem is that we just run it at a high resolution as we can and we screen capture.